Welcome back, YouTube. How do I look? We got leg days today. Um, we are joined by the amazing Amp Tan, and we've got a pretty stock standard leg day. We're going to do one primary movement, a couple of accessories. That's about it. Let's get into it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually probably a good thing that you're wearing that right now, because I want to start with some jumps. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they and don't they don't move around yet. Is this your warm up? Yeah, this is a warm up. So oh. we are going to start out with some broad jumps or just jumping, bounding forwards. I like to have a little bit of an athletic component into a lot of my workouts at the moment. As I transition a little bit further away from pure muscle size hypertrophy and a bit more towards still being strong and powerful, but having a more slightly more athletic focus, sprinkling something like this, really really simple way to get things going. We'll do a few sets, something like, you know, three to five sets, three-ish jumps. The goal will be to explode more powerfully each time. And you should find, as your body warms up as well, your brain turns on more, you get more powerful. You can walk back to the start. So ideally, you're going to rebound off the floor very quickly between jumps. But if you need to, because there's a lot of time involved that I'm still very uncoordinated as well, take a pause between each jump, okay? Oh my goodness. See that? <laughs> Last one, I kind of fell. You know, those trousers don't look very stretchy, but surprisingly, they, they are. are. They, they don't have a four-way stretch, but they got a two-way stretch. Give it a tug. Oh yeah, tug it. Here I go. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I can't. Ugh. Yeah, that's cool. The goal is to be like light on the feet, which I'm not, um, but it's something that it just comes with time. So let's do a sumo deadlift for you off a deficit to really hit them gluteals. And I'll be doing a zercher squat. Yeah, I've not done sumos. Yeah, so we'll find out. We'll see how it goes for you. So just step up on here, please. Roughly there. And we'll just start with that as your setup. We might play your stance a little bit, but just squat down towards the bar and grab onto it just inside your legs. Cool, and stand up. You know how to deadlift. Perfect, cool. So just while we get used to you coordinating the movements, we'll go a little bit slower. Perfect because I want you to really think about not lifting the bar up, but pushing, yeah, pressing your legs down. Yeah, that feels nice. Yeah. This may or may not help you, and may not feel good, but try to think about opening your hips. Like you're just pulling your legs open, which you would know nothing about. Yeah. <laughs> now you see how you're kind of like dumping in that last inch? Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. So I'm not supposed to drop? You just do a very, very soft kiss on the ground. Oh. Very light touch. Now, right now, as you do it, your hips are staying quite high. Oh. Totally fine. Experiment, see if you prefer bending the knees a bit more. It does slightly change the mechanics of the movement for you guys watching, but it's personal preference more than anything else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been following along with my programming on Gambaru, you'll know that I've been taking a little bit more of a hybrid approach to my leg day specifically. To be perfectly honest, it's because having big legs serves next to no functional purpose and no benefit. <laughs> Apart from just looking fucking awesome when you got big, thick, hard, girthy legs. It's, it's cool, yeah? But apart from that, it's, it's not fun to be walking and your legs are chafing. It's not fun to not be able to fit into regular people pants. Even now, these have to be tailored. My leg training personally is more about power and strength and there will be some hypertrophy, some muscle building still, but instead of it being say 80% muscle building, 20% all the other stuff, now it's more like 50-50 or maybe even, even less muscle building. But you'll see there's gonna be pretty big similarities between how I would set this up if I had the pure muscle building goal versus if I didn't. And you'll see what we do for Amber here is we'll take more of the hypertrophy stimulus where we're trying to just build bigger legs, smaller than anything else. Or I could do the same thing here or another exercise to make it more muscle building focused. Perfect technique, keep that going. Three more, keep that very slow, soft touch on the ground. Push, good. And down slow and open your hips and you come down, open the hips. Yes. Perfect. We're not gonna completely destroy things because this is Em's first time doing this exercise. That counts as a one set, yeah? No. Perfect. Uh, just when you're first starting a new exercise, there's no need to completely send it. I think it's important to push hard, but I'd rather accumulate that hard through more sets as opposed to the pushing the one set as highly effortfully as possible. It's because of the skill component when you're learning and coordinating something new. You know, very limited injury risk, if anything, but I'd rather accumulate more practice. Push. No! Okay, you're done, you're done. Ah, <laughs> oh, my back's gonna give out if I, yeah, that last one I felt like I was gonna. 
I was going to do something to my back if I had one more. <laughs> That's totally cool. Every other up until then was completely fine. Which happens a lot on, on these skill-based things is it can just look really, really good. But when you're learning a new skill like this, your failure point will come on a lot faster than expected on say something that you do all the time. But also just the more technical lifts, you'll typically just have to cut things shorter earlier because you'll just know in your head, okay, even though it looks nice, I know my next rep won't. So my goal with this, I'm gonna be doing probably just one, maybe two hard sets of around two to four reps. If I was doing this more to build muscle, I might still do the exact same exercise, but I would try to push slightly higher reps, more like four to 12 instead. And I probably honestly wouldn't do this because it's quite unstable by the end. And what really fatigues is the upper back and the rectus from supporting you more than your legs. Perfect, yes. Soft touch, push hard with the legs, push into the ground. That's it, give me one more. One more perfect rep, squat it down and push up, push up, push up. Perfect. Control, yes. I love this true OnlyFans angle you got going on. Mm -hmm. Holy fuck. Oh, that ends. So you're gonna post that and be like, hey guys, train shoulders today. <laughs> it's funny as it is, I've actually seen people literally do that. All right guys, welcome to my next <laughs> shoulder workout. Who needs a, you know, still catching my breath. <laughs> I actually have to focus now, fuck. Sick. When it comes to putting together a leg workout, there's a billion ways you can do it. The way that I like to structure things is I'll have one main primary movement. So for me today, it's a Zercha squat. For Amber, it's this sumo deficit deadlift. Hers is more hypertrophy focused, mine is more power, strength, but they could be switched around with say, a pendulum or a leg press, back squat, whatever you like. Um, I'll pick one of those and then we'll do a couple of accessories to fill in whatever gaps there may be. So today we're gonna to be hitting hamstrings and abs as our accessory movements. So other days, you might choose, say instead of a squat pattern, you might do a Romanian deadlift or a hinge hamstring pattern as your primary. And then what's missing from that is maybe some quads. So you might do more of a quad thing, maybe an ab thing as well, maybe a lower back, whatever. Um, but that's how you can just cover those bases. So there's no single leg today. I do single leg on another day, which is what I'd recommend as well. I've been doing pendulum, that's been good. I'm still on like push pull legs. How long have you been on that program? I don't know. <laughs> No, but Gambaro, it's been like two, three years. I have like people asking me like, are you still doing it? I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> have you seen the new program we just released? Oh my gosh, there's so many like the, the hybrid ones, right? Well, the hybrid ones, but there's also, there's a new glute one, a, a physique one. It's, um, it's called X-Frame. I think it's three lower body days a week, two upper body days. That's like how you had the, um, I think it was a glute focus. Yes. I tried that for one week and I just switched. <laughs> It's like your legs never recover. But hey, you know what? At Gambaru, we give you flexibility to switch whenever yeah, you like. Yeah, exactly. So I just keep switching, you know? It's fine. You can just switch because there's so many programs. All right, let's go do some um, hamstrings. What do you prefer, a lying or a seated? I don't mind. I do both in the push pull legs. So. Let's go seated today. <laughs> I don't know how many I was doing. <laughs> That's fine, we're not, we're not at the working weight just yet. Do you get a lot of guys checking you out at the gym? I don't know, I don't look, I'm like this. Do you ever like, cause you film a lot of your, your workouts. Would you ever see someone in the background who's just been like ogling or whatever? No, I feel like they're like this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Would you feel uncomfortable if like you were, say you were filming yourself cause you're checking your technique and you saw in the background someone was just like. No, nah, I'll be like, whatever, you know, people look. I guess it depends on the extremity of it. Like at some point it's gonna be a bit creepy. Yeah. But you know, just like having a gander. Whatever. Like oh, I look cool, at girls whatever. when I'm at the gym. Oh my gosh, I'm beauty. Yeah, it's a but weird I can't thing, guys, right? You know? Like I, th I, I don't know, like, I don't know where I sit on the whole Joey Swole kind of culture around check, right, people yeah. checking each other out. Because I mean like, I, I obviously don't go to commercial gyms much anymore. But when I used to train in them, if I saw somebody with a good physique, male or female, I'd be like, Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'm like, and, and that if they're doing something, I'll just like, you know, watch. 
I won't lick my lips and put my hands down my pants. I, I, I guess one thing might be the intent though. Like yeah. it, it, when that would happen and I'd be looking at guy or girl or whatever, it would be in like, that's impressive admiration. And nine times out of 10, I'd go over to them after and I'd be like, hey, you look good or you're doing really good work, good technique, whatever it is. And I'd move on. And it wouldn't be like a, hey, <laughs> you got really good technique. You want, you want me to show you how to do that bicep curl later? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, again, I guess it is intent, but I was, I was interested to like how you feel about it from the other side. Because yeah, it's like, one thing for I me to say it. I don't really care because, I mean, if I saw a nice physique, I would look. Yeah. I'm not saying I do, but, yeah. you know, thank you if you think I do. I do wonder if it's worse over in the US, for example, though. Gym culture, I was surprised how different it is. I'm and also, Swalls, right? Yeah. I mean, the volume of people who are in gyms, the volume of younger people who are in uh, gyms as well yeah. over there, just the whole fitness culture But there's also huge. another thing where people film and then they zoom in on people just to say they're staring. Yeah. Like, no, they're not staring. Like, even if they are, you're filming them. You have yeah. their face on your phone. Yeah. If that happened, I'd be like, well, if you have an issue with them staring or looking at you or whatever, talk to them or talk to somebody else. Why in the Why gym, try right? to make content and get clout out yeah, of it? Yeah, that's just not right. Yeah, instead I'll just be like, if you feel uncomfortable, which you genuinely could, I respect that, speak to management. This is not a social media thing. Yeah. Because they're not on social media, they don't, they don't give a shit about you on social media. The only thing that's fueling is your own clout. Yeah. Do something about it properly and um, speak to management. <clears throat> what I like about this as well is your whole like, thighs are on the seat whereas some of them the seat pushes it so much forward that your legs kind of come off the seat but it just doesn't feel right you know yeah i know you know eugene i know glad you agree <laughs> this is why i don't work out with an amber <laughs> There's nothing quite like just being so locked in on a machine. There's very few machines like that, to be honest, like for any, any body part where the only thing you can do is the exercise. Like a lot of all your back machines, there's so much room for cheating or degradation of technique. The only thing you can do there is just move less and do partials. Anytime you're trying to just strive for pure size, the more that you can remove variables of changes in technique, the better the more, the easier it'll be for you to target the one thing that you want to target and completely tax it to the point of no return where it will then come back bigger, hopefully. I think we need one more set. Huh? What? Okay. Okay. Fine. I, I was hoping you would say no, to be perfectly oh. honest. <laughs> <laughs> On average, when it comes to choosing sets though, I will go for anywhere between one to three sets. I usually have a very specific target, so I'm going to hit two sets in my program and no matter what, I'm going to get there. But I also had the conversations with myself where I'm saying, Am I really gonna have another productive set? Am I going to be able to push that set close to that same point? Um, what's the trade off? Because if we're looking at how much of a stimulus you're getting from set one versus set two, you're going to get so much benefit from doing the first set, especially if you push it hard. The second set, you're gonna get a lot of benefit, but significantly less as well. There's a bit of a drop off there, but you are gonna always build up more and more fatigue. So I ask myself, what's the trade off there and is it worth it? A lot of the time it definitely is. So, so that set there, to be perfectly honest, was a, a good example of a set that probably wasn't necessary. I got like 15 reps on the first set. That set, I think I got five or six and then a few partials, which is still five or six fantastic muscle building reps that are really productive to do. But seeing such a steep drop off in performance from set one to set two tells me that set two was probably unnecessary. And even if my goal was absolute maximum thick, girthy, juicy, hanging hamstrings, I would still rather say, you know what? I'm gonna get a better performance if I call it there and come back in two days time and do hamstrings again. And it will take me five minutes. And the more I can repeat that little touch up of hamstrings at a high level, that's probably gonna be a better stimulus overall. Contrast that though with what Amber did on the deadlifts. She hit failure the first set, but we still did two more because I knew she'd be able to get productive work in still on the subsequent sets. So we kept going. And then after the first, we're like, oh, she might get a fourth or fifth set even, but at that point, it's kind of unnecessary for what we're trying to get here. Cause you can always get a lot more done across a week or a month or a year as opposed to in the one session. So there's no rush, you know? All right, let's do some abs. Ooh, um, okay. Let's actually have a bit of fun today with some abs. Okay. So for you guys, when it comes to the accessory stuff, I have structure in terms of the body part I want to hit and the action. So just then we did a leg curl. I, in my nerdy brain, I call it knee flexion, 
whether I do it seated or lying, or if I do a Nordic curl, or if I did, I don't even know, some weird roller thingamajig, it doesn't really matter that much as long as I'm getting quality stimulus in, in knee flexion. And I do keep some structure there so when I come back to it, I know that I'm gonna make progress, almost completely randomized. But I also like to use these kinds of accessory movements to explore and say, hey, if we did line leg curl instead of seated leg curl, is there a big difference? Probably not. Especially when you draw it out across months and weeks. If I'm doing both limb occasionally, it's going to be good. Just work hard, you'll get jacked. So on that note, I normally do an ab thing. I'm doing it on the GHD. I literally just had the thought last week with Bianca when she was in here. I was like, you know, the intrusive thoughts. She's seen me over the last six months or so trying to perfect. Oh my goodness. The ab crunch. Oh crap. Oh shit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, this is kind of like a reformer bed. I keep forgetting that you're like a legitimate Pilates instructor. I know. <laughs> it's because even that. <laughs> reformer pilates where it's relaxing i'm like what are you doing do you think this is yoga well it might be but not in here can you imagine showing up to like a really zen 8 p.m pilates sessions it's yeah. marketed as gentle relaxation core and like you know cool down work mm. and, and this is your instructor i know i have had people say i thought this was relaxing i'm like well you are wrong <laughs> two things i want to mention to you guys here first first of all I don't want you to see an exercise like this and think, oh my God, this is the one thing I must do. And if I don't do it, I'm going to lose all my muscle and see zero gains. This 100% is probably the absolute greatest ab exercise ever. And let me explain to you why. Most ab crunches, even when you're doing it, you've probably seen a lot of CrossFitters doing, using this machine to do ab crunches. They hook their feet in up here. Okay, and that's how I've been doing it for a long time as well. But when you anchor your knee instead, you get so much more stability where you need it which is around the hip joint, or the knee joint for the hip joint. If you look at most of the decline sit-up benches in most of your gyms, fact check me if you want, you're going to hook your feet in kind of like this, and your knees will be just kind of bent, but there's nothing blocking off your knee up here. Having that as your anchor point and your back stabilized allows you to use a lot more power and strength out of your abs. But honestly, how much are you losing out on by not being able to do this because it requires specialized equipment? And even if you have this equipment, it's fucking impractical to set up in any gym. <laughs> You're not gonna lose that much. Six months later, 12 months later, it all lines out in the wash, it's all fine. Do what you can to give yourself the stability, but don't feel bad if you can't do it. I can envision this is gonna give us a very inappropriate thumbnail. I was gonna say, like, where do I film this from? I know, like, should I wear my hoodie? <laughs> do I need to wear it so you don't get banned? Look, we'll see what happens for this set, and then if we need to, we'll, we'll film another. <laughs> Wait, we'll where see. do you put no, your so, bum? So, okay. Um, yeah, feet exactly. on the ground. Oh! Feet on the ground, bum goes down oh, here. Yeah, okay. Oh! Like so as well, guys, oh, that's nice. a lot of GHDs, which is what this machine is, don't have the exact sense that this one has. So you may not even be able to set this up if you have the GHD and the sheer ignorance of other people around you to pull this into <laughs> your gym's cable station. Excuse me, um, are you using that cable? <laughs> excuse me, are you using this entire gym? Yeah. But it's mine now, motherfucker. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this kind of thing, I do it because I can and because I play with this stuff because it's a lot of fun for me, but I want you to really keep in mind that I don't expect 99% of you to be able to do this. So lay back, please. I found a way, look. Oh, that'll work, yeah. To hold it around wherever it's comfortable for you, like around your head, or whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look this way the entire time, yep. Yeah, I'll some, like this wall, I did it, sets. I did it. Oh, cool, okay, perfect, we're good, we're good. Yeah, I yeah. got it. All right, cool. Just being choked, which is even worse. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so big things here is we're getting, even without the weight, humongous stretch. You can really open everything up. You have a really good anchor point around this hip lower back area to stabilize yourself. So you can purely just crunch and flex in through every single segment through your abs and spine. I was doing this exact movement. I'll probably, I'll send over some videos to put up here on the screen as well of me doing it just with a barbell or dumbbell. That works totally fine. You can also use resistance bands instead. So you don't have to take up a whole gymnasium just through the one exercise. You got a lot of options here. The only issue with the free weights is when you come up to the top position around there-ish, you start losing tension because the free weights are now gonna drop down so you don't get that extra range. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that'll do, drop it back, it's fine. So we're not gonna do this though, but I thought I'd just show you guys really quickly because I do want you guys to be able to experience the difference of having your feet anchored at the ankle versus oh. the quads. So get yourself a Swiss ball. This one's about to burst. 
I do have one that's more pumped up. And set yourself up in a leg curl. Right about there, thank you. And anchoring your legs in like this. Exact same crunch, you can use just a weight on your hand. That's totally fine. You will feel having that anchor versus me having, say, doing the exact same movement by having my feet anchored and the ankles anchored is so much different and so much better that way. And that's kind of what we're getting out of that exercise. <clears throat> Hold it. Yeah, slow, slow, slow. Hold it, slow. Hold. Yeah. <laughs> go, go, go. Slow. slow. One more. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll see how many I can push out of here. Still, still got to get out of here. <laughs> I feel like that'll do it, wouldn't it? Huh? Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling great. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm, I'm fucking done. Thank you. I am done. Thank you for coming in and thank you for watching and all the way to the you. end. And thank and you for subscribe. Yes, subscribe. And do all the things. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Teamwork. A true YouTube salesman. <laughs>